actually pays attention to my call. And he looks back at his darkest times and he's, he's summing them up for you. He says, that, that when sorrow surrounded me, when floods of ungodliness threatened me and, 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 and death looked like it was knocking at the door, he says, I called out to God. And, and look what he says. He says, he heard me from his temple. He heard me from heaven. Now, that's an amazing thought to David. He's, he's, he's crying out to God here on earth in all this distress, and God loves him and cares for him enough that God from heaven is listening to David. That makes it pretty uncomplicated. That makes it pretty clear. God is my Savior because he listens, and he saves me when I need him to save me. You know, rather than just throwing out the phrase, Jesus saves, how about you explain it to him? How does he do that? What does he do that saves you? When my sins earn me separation from God, when, when, which, which, which would mean eternally I would be apart from God because of my sins, which the Bible calls second death, when that was mine because of my sin, God sent Jesus to die on a cross for me. And on that cross he paid the penalty of all my sins. And when I cried out to God and accepted that gift, received that for myself, he saved me. I mean, you see, that says a whole lot more than Jesus saves, which is a great phrase, and it's a true phrase, but it's not necessarily for the whole world. They want to know what and how he saves. What difference does he make? And that's what David's telling us in a song. Here's how he saved me. Here's how he brought me through this. Phrases don't teach. Phrases don't explain or witness to anybody. They're clever. They're good. They identify us as Christians, but we need to walk people into Jesus. We need to show them how to come to him, and why does he come? Why does he want him? He, he's going to do it again. The, the Lord is his rock, he's going to say, because the Lord is my deliverer. Now look at verse, uh, verse 8. And I want you to hear, hear the sense of power. Remember, he just cried out to God, and God just heard him from heaven. And listen to the power that comes out. It says, then the earth shook and trembled. The foundations of heaven quaked. And were shaken because he was angry. Smoke went up from his nostrils and devouring fire from his mouth. Coals were kindled by it. See, David's sensing the anger of the Lord against the people who were coming against David. When, when David was, was in trouble, when Absalom was chasing him, when, when Saul was after him, and all the, all the Philistines were sending their best warriors against David, David cried out to God and he could hear the anger of God saying, Not my son, not my king. And he can feel it. And then David's sensing that, that power of God coming at, the, at, at just his call. Verse 10, he says, Then he bowed the heavens also came down with darkness under his feet. He rode upon the cherub and flew. And he was seen upon the wings of the wind. And David's talking about how fast God responded. When he cries out, this awesome power of God comes in and, and, and comes in quickly. And, 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 it's, and it's swift and it's, and it's quick. And he made darkness canopies around him, dark waters and thick clouds on the skies. From the brightness before him, coals of fire were kindled. The Lord thundered from heaven, and the Most High uttered his voice, and he sent out arrows and scattered them, scattered them like lightning bolts. He, he vanquished them. He's saying God's, God's deliverance for David comes in this fierceness of power. And David's expressing, when I called to God and he heard me from heaven, he sent everything he could to come after me. He sent all he, all he could to, to deliver me from my trials and from my enemies. And, 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 he, and there were several instances where we saw God do supernatural things for David. You remember when Absalom and his soldiers were coming after and they were fighting in, in that forest of En Gedi. And, and, and the forest, it's in the Bible in chapter 16, it said the forest took away more people than the sword did that day. Because God supernaturally intervened and caused... Yeah, something happened to happen that just devoured up the enemy. God intervenes in David's life and he intervenes in powerful ways. And David said, when I cried out to God, he heard me and he delivered me. Now watch the result. Verse 16. And then the channels of the sea were seen. The foundation of the world were uncovered. And the rebuke of the Lord that the blast of his nostrils, the breath of his nostrils... He sent from above, and he took me, and he drew me out of many waters. He delivered me from my strong enemy. And for those who hated me, for those that were, they, they were too strong for me, they, that means the enemies of God, they confronted me in the day of calamity, but the Lord was my support. He's saying here very clearly, God 
is my deliverer. God's the one that brings me through this. And, and, and people instinctively in life want to know what's, what's in it for me. Why should I believe in your Jesus? Why should I believe in your God? What, what's the point of it all? Because it's not just about going to church. It's not just about joining some church club. It's about there being some kind of result and something real that comes out of this, this relationship we have with God. And people want to know what's in Jesus for me. Why should I trust him? And rather than just say, well, just trust Jesus, which is also a great phrase, and it's a true phrase, we need to trust Jesus, tell them how in their time of distress they can, that he, Jesus will show up and do something. That's what David's showing us. He's saying, when I cried out to God, here's what he did. He came and he delivered me. He showed me his power. He showed me the fierceness. He caused supernatural things to happen to my enemy that took them all away. It was, it was incredible. It was fast. It was, it was quick. See, people want to know what difference your God's going to make. And you've got to learn to tell them in words that they can understand, not phrases that mean something to you and I. Tell them. Explain to them. When I was in trouble, God brought me out. He gave me some hope. He showed me in his word how, how I could have a better life. He showed me how I could, I could walk different. That if I just learned to pray about it, if I learned to, to think about it, if I learned to think on better things, it would get me out of the negative space. that I, You know, there's a lot of ways to explain God. And David, in his song, is just telling people, this is what God did. This is how he works. I mean, when you lead somebody to an understanding that God can actually come in and support you in your life. That he can be a crutch you can lean on. He can be somebody you can believe in. That he can be counted on to come in in a time of darkness. You know what you're doing? You're giving them a tool for life. You're giving them something they can hang on to in, in, in dark times. They don't want to just hear Jesus say, trust Jesus, bless God. How? Why? Why should I do that? What's he going to do? That's exactly what David's singing about. When I cried to the Lord, here's what he did. And he gives, them, he gives us the answer. Then he sings on. He says, the Lord was his fortress. That's why he's my rock, because he's a fortress. A fortress is that place you go to to hide out, to hide and, and, and be safe. When I was a kid, around my house in Covina, I was on the Covina Irwindale border. There's a lot of gravel pits and stuff around there, a lot of empty space. We used to go out in these big fields and we'd make forts. And these forts were, you know, we would build them up. We'd dig holes and put roofs over them and all kinds of stuff and, and fortify them. And, and, and we'd go camp there at night. And it was fun because we'd get inside this fort. The better the fort, the better security we had. If we had a flimsy fort, we're kind of waiting for wolves to eat us all night. Or black bears or something <laughs> coming out, out of the hills and get it. But when we had a good fort, there was security. And that's what a fortress is. A fortress is that place you go to find comfort and peace and rest. And David said, God is my fortress. Look at verse 20. He also brought me out of the broad place and he delivered me because he delighted in me. The broad place means open, unsecure. There's, you're out in the middle of openness. There's no protection. And he said, God brought me from that just because he liked me. Just because he delighted in me. And the Lord rewarded me according to my righteousness, according to the cleanliness of my hand. Um, he had recompensed me. For I have kept the way of the Lord and have not wickedly departed from my God. For all his judgments were before me. As for his statutes, I did not depart from them. I was also blameless before him, and I kept myself from iniquity. Therefore the Lord has recompensed according to my righteousness, according to the cleanliness of in his eyes according to my cleanliness in his eyes. With the merciful, you will show yourself merciful. With the blameless, you will show yourself blameless. With the pure, you show yourself pure. And with the devious, you show yourself shrewd. You will save the humble people, but your eyes are on the haughty that you may bring them down. Now, when you're reading that list of things that David said, he recorded me according to my righteousness. I've kept my, the ways of the Lord. I've not wickedly departed from my God. Does that ring true with what we know about David's life? No. He slept with his neighbor's wife. He killed the guy to get him. I mean, there was all kinds of stuff David did. I mean, this is, this is like my wife saying, you always do this. You never do this. We're, you know, it's always and always and always and always and every time kind of moment. You know, she's in the nursery. She can't hear me right now. <laughs> 
This is David saying, I've always been good. I've always tried. No, David, no, you haven't. You've blown it many times. But the key is your God loves you. And your God cares. And your God provides a way for you, even in your failures. And David's acknowledging that, that it, and, and then the, when you get down to with, with the merciful, you show yourself merciful. With the blameless, you'll show yourself blameless. He's just saying God is gonna, God is gonna reward us according to His glory, according to His will and His goodness. He doesn't reward us according to ours. He gives us what He wants to give us. He gives us what we deserve in His eyes, not ours, not because of our actions. We'd be in trouble if that was the case. David's expressing a very simple principle here. When, we're, when we surround ourselves with God, and he becomes this thing that we immerse ourselves in, that we, we, we immerse ourselves in his will, we, we, we look to his word and we seek his path, when we're standing in the center of God's will, God is a fortress. His victories become our victories. His ways become our ways, and we can't lose. And that's where David's at. He's saying, I, when we follow God's will and his plan for us, we're going to win. And God's going to deliver us. He's going to bring us through. I mean, telling somebody just to turn to Jesus, sure. But tell them why. Tell them what God does. Tell them how he, how he makes a difference here. And that, and that gives them something to cling to. It gives them the reason to say, why do I want your God? Because when I do, he's going to give me his word to God. He's going to give me uh, principles and, and precepts for life that, that bring me to a healthier place than I'm living at right now. He's going to surround me with his other believers who are going to bring me to a positive place in my life. He's going to give me a Holy Spirit that will be a guide. You see, there's reasons other than just trust. There's good reason. There's valid reason. There's honest reasons that we can, we can point to from our life. And that's what David's saying. Here's what God did. When I followed his way, this is what happened. I've blown it. He's blown it many times. But God rewards him every time he stepped up, every time he came back to God, every time he, he turned his heart back to God, there was God right there waiting for him, like that prodigal father for that son, waiting for him to come home. And that's what he gives David. And there's the support. That's his, that's his foundation, his fortress. Well, the Lord is David's rock, he says next, because the Lord is his strength. Verse 29. For you are my lamp, O Lord. The Lord shall enlighten my darkness, for, you, for by you I can run against the troop. By my God I can leap over a wall, and as far as God, his way is perfect. The word of the Lord is proven. He is also a shield to all who trust him. For who is God except the Lord? And who is the rock except our God? God is my strength and power. He, his, his, he makes my ways perfect. He makes my feet like the feet of a deer and sets me on high places. He teaches my hands to make war so that my arms can bend the bow of bronze. Did you catch all the ways that David says God's my strength? He was a light for David to see in a world full of darkness. He gave David courage to rise up and, uh, against the truth in battle. God gave him the abilities in times of need. He said, my, by my God, I could leap over walls. He was a shield. He gave David steadfast and said, he made my feet like the feet of a deer, which means, you know, firm and, and steady. You ever watch a deer or a, or a goat run up the mountainside? He said, you're giving me firmness in my walk. And he attributes his victory in battle to the Lord. He says, you, you, your hands teach me how to make war. My, you, you give me my arms the strength to, to bend a bow of bronze. You know, that's what your neighbor who's asking the question, why did God not spare my wife cancer? That's what your neighbor needs to hear. How God can be your strength. How God can get you through a terrible time or a difficult time in life. And many of us have been through those times. We've been through some hard things and difficult marriages and people and work and all kinds of situations where, where, where we hang on and we trust Scripture and we look to God and, and He gives us guidance to get through. 
and he brings us to the other side. To tell somebody who's hurting, well, all things work together for good to those who love God, is not an answer. That's a truth for us, and we get it. We who know the Lord understand that God does cause all things to work for his glory if we will follow and trust God. But your neighbor who's hurting wants to know how God does that. He wants to know why God does that. He wants to know uh, how things work. In their trials, they want to know how God strengthened and carried us through our darkest days. And through our trials, the, the same trials they're experiencing, how did God get me through it? Because that's going to give them hope. That's going to carry them through. David said, here's, God, here's how God was my, was my strength. Here's what he did. And he's explaining it. We need to learn to explain it to people and share it. And what they need really is what David sings about next. Is, and the Lord says rock because all his victories, all the things that are good in his life come from God. He says, you have also given me the shield of your salvation. Verse 36. Your gentleness has made me great. Hear what David saying? He said, I'm great because I serve a great God. That's what he's saying. You enlarged the path under my feet so my feet didn't slip. He's saying, you brought me here. I am where I am, God, because you brought me to this place. I have pursued my enemies and destroyed them. Neither um, did I turn back again until they were destroyed. I have destroyed all of them and wounded them so that they could not rise. I, they have fallen under my feet. For you have armed me with the strength for battle. You have subdued under me those who rose, rose against me. You have also given me the, the necks of my enemies so that I am not destroyed. So I have destroyed those who hated me. They looked, but there was none to save, even to the Lord, but he did not answer them. Then I beat them as fine as dust on the earth, and I trod them like dirt in the streets, and I spread them out. He's saying, Lord, all my victories in battle were all because you didn't want my enemy to win, because you were there for me. Verse 44, it says that you also delivered me from the strivings of my people. David could have just as easily said, you know what, my battles belong to the Lord. But he wants to tell us what that means. And we need to hear. I need to know how the Lord can bring you a victory in a struggle that I'm going through. I need to know how that this, this thing that I'm looking at that is so difficult for me. And I, you know, life's not all full of horrible things. But life is full of a lot of challenges. And those challenges can be tough when we're facing them. They can be difficult things. They can be roadblocks in, in our joy. And if I know that you survived this thing that I'm going through, whatever it is, that's a hope for me. Because if you can do it, I can do it. If you can be strong, then I can be strong. That's why God puts us together. That's why he gives us these testimonies that we share and, and we can tell each other how to be strong and, and walk each other through these difficult times. And I need to know when I'm in a battle, how you got through yours. And David's saying, I'm doing that because my victories are from God. Here's how he brought me through. And he's explaining the victories that God brought him through his life. He's singing about them. Tell them the story. Tell someone the story of the victories that you have in your life. Tell them what God has done in very simple terms that anyone can understand it. Look at the last thing he sings. It's kind of similar to the last one. He says he, he is who he is because of God. In other words, the good things, they all come from God. He says, you've kept me, verse 44, you kept me as the head of a nation. A people I have not known shall serve me. The foreigners submit to me. As soon as they hear, they obey me. The foreigners fade away and, they, and come frightened from their hideouts. The Lord lives. Blessed be my rock. Let God be exalted, the rock of my salvation. It is God who avenges me and subdues people under me. He delivers me from my enemies. You also lift me up those who um, above those who rage against, rise against me. And you've delivered me from your, the violent man. Therefore, I will give thanks to you, O God, among the
the Gentiles and sing praises to your name. He's a tower of salvation to this king and shows mercy to his anointed, to David and his descendants forevermore. You know, if we're truly striving to live life for God, if we're truly following his word and, and, and seeking to hear his voice and, and determined to obey the prompting of the Holy Spirit in our life and, and really understanding the precepts that this Bible brings us, your life is going to change. It's going to get better. And people are going to come to you eventually and say, what's your secret? What's different about you? They're going to want to know why and how you survive and make it through the way you do. And for us to say God is good all the time and all the time God is good doesn't mean much. It's a great phrase and it's fun to do. But people want to know how. How is he good to you? And what did he do for you? And how do you know it was him who did it? See, those are the questions that we need to learn to answer. God is good all the time, and all the time God is good is a truth that is true for us. But to a non-believer, they're probably not ready to understand that. So tell them how he was good. Tell them what he did. Tell them how you know it was God. I mean, the trick before us today, what this passage gives us is, is, is a challenge. Can we do what David did? Can we, can we go deeper in our witness, in our sharing our faith with other people than just catchphrases? Because if we can, if we can actually explain to somebody how... God is our rock. Simply and concisely. Then we might be the people. We might be the person that God would use to bring somebody to Jesus. If you could learn to just say, let me tell you what God has done for me. It's one of the simplest things you can questions you can answer. But one of the greatest ways you'll open somebody's mind and heart to the Lord. Just tell them what God has done. All throughout the series, I've, I've brought up people to share their testimonies. And I tried to bring people that don't normally get up here and speak. Because I didn't want you to see polished people talking. And so I brought up people that don't normally speak because I want you to see that anybody can do it. And they've shared with you their stories. They've told you what God has done. they told you how God has brought them through and, and carried them through. And, and now, as we come to the end of this study, we've got two more weeks here, and we're going to be done with Samuel. Now it's your turn. And I'm not going to make you speak. I'm not going to give you a microphone. We'll be here till Tuesday if we do that. <laughs> but I, I'm going to have the ushers come forward. Ushers, come on up. And they're going to pass out a post-it note. And I want you to take a post-it note. And a sharpie. There's a sharpies and post-it notes in the, in the in each box. Just go ahead and pass them out. And I want you to just give me one sentence. One sentence. Finish this sentence. The Lord is my rock because. Now, don't cheat and just say because I'm blessed. <laughs> because that doesn't say anything. Tell them why you're blessed. The Lord is my rock because he delivered me from alcohol. He delivered me from anger. He delivered, I'm giving you mine, guys. He delivered me from a temper. You know, he's caused me to have a great wife and a good marriage. And, and he's given me things. So, so write it down, okay? You might have to share Sharpies if we run out. But, but I want you to just write one sentence. Worship team, come forward. Um, and just finish that sentence. The Lord is my rock because... And give me one good sentence. And here's what I want you to do. I want you to take that paper. Sometime during this song or after church as you exit. And I want you to walk around the front of that wall right there as you enter the church and slap it up on that wall. I'm going to leave those hanging up there for, until the rest of the series. But that's your witness. That's your first line. Your first opportunity to share your faith in an honest, clear way. The Lord is my rock because. Finish that sentence. And then just during this next worship song and just take it and slap it up on that wall or do it on your way out and, 
and let's share. But let's uh, let's go to the Lord. Father, thank you. Lord, this this study of David has been so enlightening, Lord. Thank you. Thank you for David. Thank you for his life. Thank you for his humanity. Thank you for his mistakes and the things he's done that has shown us that even we can blow it as David did. And yet, Lord, you still, you still love us. We can still be a man and woman after God's heart, even in the midst of all the things we've done wrong. And Lord, you are faithful and you're true. And God, you are our rock, the rock of our salvation. You have done so much for us. And Lord, we want to learn to tell people. And so give these brothers and sisters the witness and the strength and the courage to just, just say one sentence. The Lord is my rock because. However, Lord, bless them for writing it. Let it be a, a, a message that they carry throughout this week to those around them, to those that need to hear what God has done in their life. And we praise you. We give you glory. And we worship you now in Jesus' name. Amen. Just finish that sentence and, and, and let's worship the Lord. And like I said, post it on that wall somewhere, either when you go out or sometime during the song. And let's just carry that as a witness this week. God has blessed you. He's blessed you in amazing ways.